well, this is it. The big daddy of all the Freddy films, in my humble opinion. A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3, The Dream Warriors. What can I say? The film stars Heather Langkamp, who returns as Nancy Thompson. Robert Englund returns as Freddy Krueger. And his portrayal of Freddy Krueger in this is still not the really jokey Freddy Krueger that we know. But it has the beginnings of that. And we also have Lawrence Fishburne, Morpheus himself. John Saxon also returns as Lieutenant Thompson. The film was directed by Chuck Russell and written by Wes Craven, Bruce Wagner, and Frank Darabont. This film was a real powerhouse of talent when it came to writers, directors, and actors. Unbeknownst at the time, many of these people would go on to star in so many hits and write so many great things that there's too many to list in this particular review. I mean, Chuck Russell was the director of Fringe episodes, he made Bless the Child, Eraser, he directed The Mask, he directed the remake of The Blob, Frank Darabont, as I said, was a writer of Shawshank Redemption, The Walking Dead, The Mist, The Green Mile, Morpheus himself is known for the John Wick franchise, The Matrix, of course, he was in Marvel films and DC films such as Batman v Superman, Man of Steel, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Event Horizon, The Man Was in Boys in the Hood, Death Wish 2, MASH, Apocalypse Now, and the list goes on and on. John Saxon is the legend, of course, and you know most of the other cast. Dawkins made the song Dream Warriors, which appeared after the credits on the home video release. One of the flaws left in the film is Nancy's white streak is seen on her right side, but it was on the left side in the original Nightmare on Elm Street. So that's their bad. Now that you know that, you'll never be able to unsee it. And you're welcome. Oh, Kirsten here is pretty new to the scene and breaks the cardinal rule of not falling asleep while building a paper mache Freddy house. So, of course, she transports into the dream world, and we get more of these creepy little girls. And they're playing jump rope with some other kids. Yep. And like any other normal person, does the only sane thing to do. Follow the creepy little girl on the creepy little tricycle into the haunted house. She finds her way to the basement, where she finds the little girl and... Fire! Startled, she grabs the little girl and tries to run away, rescuing her and in turn turning her into a girl skeleton. But not before stepping in some black tar and getting our first glimpse of Freddy. Psych. And this is a theme with Freddy making it look like these kids are just killing themselves. Which I gotta say is pretty brilliant. So this is where Morpheus got his start. I knew it. After meeting up with some of our more colorful characters, we meet back up with Kristen, who is clearly insane and falling apart. Back up, Doctor. Clearly she's the one. It takes Nancy's return to know that it's about to get serious. An actually calm little Kirsten, 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 uh, whatever her name is, to calm her down. Shared trauma and transitions are a powerful thing. Where he got the razors, but he cut off his own eyelids to stay awake. Oh, God. Yeah, man, that shit's terrifying. There's that drug, Hypnosil. That surely won't come back in later films. So I guess Nancy's still struggling with the past as well. And I don't know, but... Who is this nun? Man, she is sexy. And she's gone. Just like that. And just like that, the plot thickens. And another beautiful transition. This, this whole wing is devoted to the program. Um, I guess, yeah, you can use this office for the time being, okay? This should be fine. It should be a perfect office for counseling suicidal teenagers. 
we get some more introductions to some of our more interesting characters. And this film is just laden with interesting characters. I cannot iterate that enough. The writing on this film is above and beyond anything that has come before it and anything that has come after it. I might be exaggerating a little bit. Miss Thompson, I don't know what you want from me. Just some answers. There are other kids involved, not just Kristen. All good kids, smart kids. Look, I'm sorry to hear that, but you're the experts on this, not me. If I had any insight into any of this, I would share them with you. Well, as terrible as a parent you must be, I cannot argue with that logic. And so defeated and on her own, Nancy proceeds up the stairs to take a look at the bedroom of said teenager. And what she finds, well, it confirms all her fears. Young Kellogg's is in the paper mache. We get some creepy music as the good doctor does some research of his own and finds out quickly that Nancy herself is a drug addict. Nah, I'm just kidding. That's a lot worse than that. Good old Raisin Bran here falls asleep again and uh... Yep, she didn't learn from the last time, and we get to reap all the benefits. Clearly, the budget is much bigger this time around. <laughs> Old Corn Flakes finds herself back in the Freddy house, and this time even dinner wants her dead. After making her way to the den, she finds the pet carpet snake, And that's it. Oh, Christy here is done. And little old Fred here is one. She meets her demise. This sequel was much shorter than the other films. And, uh, uh, oh, wait a minute. Well, that makes sense. And then pops Nancy to save the day. And that is how you set up a true horror rivalry, guys. I see a beautiful relationship blooming. I used to live in this house. No wonder you have back problems. Young Kaleidoscope here has the ability to pull other people into her dreams, which is quite convenient, and I'm sure won't lead to the demise of several of her friends. Well, we find ourselves in a therapy session, and we meet all the other characters in our film, and they all share one common thing. They all dream about the same guy. This is something I really love about this film. The longer we hang out with this cast of characters, these actors work so well together, it really makes you care for them. It makes you feel sorry for their plight. And by the time you end up losing some of them, you're really invested. On the other hand, Who doesn't love a good splatter fest? A nice troll, asshole. <laughs> See? And you know what'll help these kids? More therapy. He wasn't strong enough, so he got wasted. That's all. That's all? Is that what you think? The more times I watch this film, the more that it just seems like it's a better movie than it should be. All around. All the child actors at the time, all the adult actors, Robert England chews up the scenery as Freddy in this film. And say what you want about a skeptical nurse, but she's right in wanting to keep these kids sedated and asleep. So no one goes out and jumps off of a building again. But it just so happens that we know what's really going on, and Sir Kincaid here is having none of that. You, you sit up! He's a Kincaid! Nobody gonna put me to sleep! Man, man, get away from me, man! Get... Elizabeth, I'm prescribing hypnocil. It's a dream suppressant. Finally, a good idea. I just can't believe what I'm hearing. I want these dreams stopped until we get some answers. All right. I can't allow that. Aww. 
You know, the fan fiction part of me wants to believe that this is Morpheus, and this is part of the Matrix he was trapped in before he was freed. Doesn't that sound amazing? Wow! <laughs> Kinky. And although she tried really hard, that did nothing for her. Best late night show ever. Ahem. And now for some exposition. This is Sister Mary Helena. And, well, she, uh... Uh... quiet spirit must be laid to rest. It is an abomination to God and to man. I think that maybe she's Batman. I was just talking to... As their relationship grows a little deeper, you know, they kind of open up to each other and start to figure things out, put two and two together, and uh, both kind of decide that they're crazy. This is my Malaysian dream doll. Nothing makes any sense. Okay, straight talk only in this room. Oh, Nancy gives them the talk and makes them all realize that who's been chasing them is none other than Fred Krueger, child killer extraordinaire. That they're not delusional and that each one of them has a special power when they're in the dream world. Hence, the dream warriors. And so Nancy convinces old Kleppy Narcolepti here into pulling everyone into her dream. And she agrees. Well, bummer. I guess it didn't work. And so Joey goes and follows his crush back to the honeymoon suite. You're so cute. Time? If it doesn't work, I promise I'll... Oh, look, I, I guess it did work. That's amazing. In my dreams, I can walk. In my dreams, I am the wizard master. All right. And Kristen knows gymnastics. Amazing. A perfect score. The crowd goes wild. And of course, Kincaid can, uh, he can, he can, he can be angry and break things. In my dreams, I'm beautiful. Amazing. That's really going to help later on. And what's Joey's superpower? Oh, hey, that's what I'm talking about. I uh, what uh oh, 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 oh. I mean, that's kind of kinky, but uh Okay, okay, I see what's going on here now. <laughs> well, I guess we probably should have saw that coming. And uh, now that they're all trapped, they wake up out of their dream, powerless, and find that Joey's in a coma, discovered by our cratchy old nurse, who's going to make sure that they're all jobless, locked up forever, and the situation seems hopeless as can be. Sister? Exposition dump. The swing has been closed for years. What was this? Our good sister here tells us about a young lady who was locked all weekend inside of the insane asylum with a bunch of maniacs that raped her over and over, over, and over again, hundreds of times, and her name was... Was Amanda Kruger. Her child, Fred. The bastard son of a hundred Also, I'm pretty sure she's Batman. Oh. 
Well, that's one way to get a tattoo. Very tribal. And so what they need to do is put Freddy's remains to rest. And then that way, I'm not sure what they're hoping to accomplish, but it's something. Something. Well, if it isn't my little girl. Enter John Saxon. Back playing Nancy's drunk father. Yeah, he's a drunk in this one. After the loss of his wife and Nancy, well, Nancy having a life of her own, he took up drinking. And he's insufferable and kind of a dick now. But, well, that's, that's pretty much it. He's an insufferable dick. It's nice seeing you again, Princess. Next time, don't, don't stay away so long. Phil Gord. Pleased to meet you. There now, we've met! Now listen to me! I don't know if you care whether Nancy lives or dies, but I do! Well, that's one way to convince him to help. So they stop at the local church, gather up some holy water, and while Nancy sneaks back to check on the kids, they go to the junkyard where Freddy's bones are buried in the trunk of a car. Yep, you heard that right. They all decide it's best they go to sleep together again because that worked out so well the first time I know Kristen <laughs> and hey maybe this was all just a crazy dream to begin with maybe she was just in a room and see here comes her mother who's only here to chastise her because she's been up late at night and you know just wants her to go to bed get her beauty rest Nothing really out of the ordinary at all. And so we get our happy ending, and this is how they wrap up the Elm Street series. For better or for worse. I said, where's the fucking vermin? You should listen to your mother. God damn it, Kristen, you ruin everything. Every time I bring a man home, you spoil it. You know what your shrink says? <laughs> Ah, what a pickle. And now the fun begins. Let's get high. <gasps> now this is where we get to see Freddy in his element. And there is nothing, and I mean nothing, that these kids can do. These scenes show how much of a force he is to actually be reckoned with. And it is glorious. It's back in the saddle again. I truly believe the little bit of time we get with Freddy in this film, he has some of the best dialogue and interaction with the characters of the whole series. Name of Loris, Prince of Elves, Demon Be Gone! I don't believe in fairy tales. <laughs> Hilarious. Kincaid finds Nancy and Kirsten, and all seems like it's gonna work out just fine. I'm guessing it's start missing. Yo, Freddy, where you hiding at you burnt face pussy? Well, maybe not. Here's those remains we were talking about earlier. And what a marvelous entrance by our hero, Freddy Krueger. Joey, let all the little piggies come home. Now this is the part where everyone bands together to get rid of Freddy. Nancy tries to help Joey out of this pit of flames. Kirsten does some kung fu on Freddy here. Kincaid beats the hell out of him with a metal pipe. But Freddy's not put down so easily. <laughs> Nancy comes to the rescue and gives Freddy a taste of his own medicine. Now that they've won, 
<laughs> he is deliciously diabolical in this film. Strong! He's never been this strong! <laughs> yes, sir. The souls of the children. Give me strength. And now that he's aware that his remains have been disturbed, we get some great Ray Harryhausen effects. <laughs> So long, John Saxon. You've been great. And you, sir, should take a nice long dirt nap. And check out this victory pump. Man, that's amazing. Back in the dream world, we find our friends in a dire situation. Freddy returns, and all seems like it's lost. And this awakens Joey's superpower. The power to scream really, really loud. Are you okay? I think so. And that's it. John Saxon comes back to greet Nancy, telling her that he's died, but that it's okay because they defeated Freddy for the final time. And it's a great ending to a great movie. This Nightmare on Elm Street is probably the best out of the whole series for one reason. All the characters are fantastic. All of their plots are wrapped up really nice and tight. Neat. Everyone gets a happy ending. There's absolutely no chance that there's another false ending in this film. If you've not detected the sarcasm in my voice by now, you probably shouldn't be subscribed to this channel. Nancy, however, does find her way back with enough strength to fight Freddy while her boyfriend or whatever he is finds a way to pull himself out of the ditch and throw some holy water on Freddy's remains and then putting him to rest for good. Rest. Destroying him again, once and for all. And Nancy succumbs to her wounds and dies. In the dream, which is terrible and tragic, and uh, drags on for way too long. Trust in him at all times, oh people. At Nancy's funeral, they find that the nun that we've been following all this time was actually Amanda Kruger herself, Sister Mary Helena, victim and mother to the son of a hundred maniacs and now with Freddy defeated he can rest easy in his bed with Nancy's weird voodoo god by his side knowing that there's no possible way Freddy can ever return again and that's it that's a nightmare on Elm Street part 3 the dream warriors and it has to be one of the best films of the series. Seriously. Freddy is a tyrant in this film. It shows his mean side and his hysterically comedic side. All while showing heart and compassion and true character development. It doesn't just feel like an Elm Street film, but a real piece of cinema. And well, that's all I've got for this one. Like and subscribe. And tune in next time when we will meet the Dream Master. And I'm pretty sure that's still Freddy. So, uh, yeah. Later.